IB Crazy here with another antenna tutorial. If you're into helium mining, you know the importance of your antennas. Well, this is an 8 dBi collinear antenna designed specifically for helium mining. What makes this a little bit different from your panels, patches, or Yagi antennas, which typically have a cone shaped beam that comes out in all directions, this one instead flattens that beam and pushes it wider to pick up more radios when you're mining helium. Now, as you can see, the shape is a little bit unusual, and you might notice that it's very similar in size to our 12 dB radon antenna. And well, that's because it uses a similar technology. The difference is, is this one is lower gain, it's 8 compared to 12 dB, and of course, this one is DIY friendly, where our radon antenna is not. The parts for this antenna you can get at your local hardware store. All you need is a piece of Romex cable. I use the ground wires. It can be 12 or 14 gauge. And you're going to need a sheet of galvanized steel. This is 19 by 6. Now, most hardware stores actually have this. They have a metal section, and these can be cut very simply by tin snips. The other thing you're going to need are some kind of foam or wooden block to support the antenna. This was just junk styrofoam I had laying around that I cut on a saw. And then the last thing you're going to need is a coaxial cable jumper. This one you can get off of eBay. Just type in RG316 jumper. Look one for one with the SMA fitting. They're about $4. So with that, let's go build the antenna. To start this build, measure out two sections of Romex cable 15 inches long. You can use 14 or 12 gauge, either one works. Even 16 gauge wire will work. Once you get them trimmed off, you want to take the ground conductor out of that. That's the one that has no coating on it at all. Take it out of both sides and then do a little bit of work to straighten it out. This will make it easier to measure and mark in the coming steps. Now we can go ahead and cut our panel to size. This panel is already 19 inches long, so I'm just going to cut it along the 6 inch side. So I'm just going to use a straight edge, then just use tin snips to cut the galvanized steel. This galvanized steel is a little bit thick. It's 24 gauge, so my tin snips are having a hard time dealing with it. The ideal thickness here is about 28 to 32 gauge. It'll make it much, much easier to cut. Now go ahead and mark the center of the panel. For a 19 inch panel, that would be nine and a half inches from the edge. And then mark the middle the other way, that would be three inches from the six inch edge. And now you're gonna to wanna to drill a hole somewhere between an eighth and a quarter inch in diameter. Now, take a tape measure and a marker to your element and make the following marks. Three, six and a sixteenth, six and five sixteenths, nine and three eighths, and fourteen and three quarters. Chop the end off at fourteen three quarters and then make a bend at each mark so that it looks like this. Basically, it's a straight wire with a large U in it. You don't have to be exactly perfect on the bend, but you want to be reasonably close. Now you're going to mirror that with your other wire. Again, the dimensions are the same. 3 inches, 6 and a 16th, 6 and 5 16th, 9 and 3 eighths, and 14 and 3 quarters. Once they're about the same and trimmed the same length, we'll move on to the next step. Now we're on to making the cable. This antenna requires a 4 to 1 balen made out of coaxial cable. Cut a section of coaxial cable 5 and a half inches long and then trim between 3 quarters of an inch and 1 inch off of each end, exposing the shield. Do the same thing to the cable you will use to feed the antenna itself. This one should obviously be longer. Now take your soldering iron and tin up the shields of each of these cables. Don't use a whole lot of solder here, just enough to get a metal coating on it so it's easy to cut. Once the coaxial cables are tinned, you can trim your balen. That is the five and a half inch long section. You want to trim exactly one half inch off of each end so that the length of cable underneath the shield is exactly four and a half inches long. This is very important. It doesn't matter how much is exposed, it matters how much is shielded. Now I'm tinning up the very ends of the cable which I've stripped. I've left about a sixteenth of an inch of insulation to prevent shorts. So now I'm going to repeat this same process trimming up the end of my feed cable. Again, leaving about a sixteenth of an inch worth of insulation available and then tinning up the center conductor. 
Just one final check to reveal that the shield is indeed four and a half inches long. And now I'm ready to start building the antenna. The first thing you need to do is fold your balin, that is the five and a half inch cable, in half. And then I like to use a zip tie to hold them in place. You want all of the shields to line up. Then what you do is go ahead and solder them all together, being sure that basically making a big solder ball out of all the shields. Then you'll take two of the center elements and tilt them one way and only one the other direction. Then the ones that are two that are tilted the one way, you want to solder them together. This might seem kind of weird, but what you're making is what is called a four to one balin. It is both an impedance transform and a way to balance the antenna. Now it's time to cut the element supports. I'm using a piece of scrap styrofoam and a cheap saw blade to cut it down. I would use a long knife, but unfortunately I can't find a good blade, so this will have to do. Once I've got a couple of blocks cut to a decent size, I'm going to mark a mark at the bottom of each block, one half inch from the bottom, and then a line all the way up to the top. This is the line that I'm going to use to cut down with my saw, and I'm going to stop at the bottom of the line so there's a half inch of foam before I'd cut all the way through. Now I'm going to go ahead and mount the elements to each block. I'm going to add a little bit of glue around the U shape of each element, then jam it down in the foam block till it stops. It obviously won't go through because there's a half of an inch of foam keeping it from doing so. I'll do this to both of them. Then I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the bottom of each block and glue it in on either side of the center of my panel. Now you'll note that it's the three inch side that is close to the center of the panel, and this is important. You, the six inch side, or approximately six inch side, should hang off the other way. So make sure that these line up so they're almost meeting in the center. You have to leave a small gap so that you have room to solder these in place. The next step is to tin your wires right at the center. You can see I've got a very small gap, about an eighth of an inch wide. Then I'm going to bring my coaxial cable up to it and solder one of the single center conductors to one side and the double to the other side. It doesn't matter which one is which, just be sure it's soldered up solid. Then I'm going to add a little bit of glue around my hole down here to act as cable support and strain relief should the cable ever get tugged, and then a little bit up at the solder joint for the same reason. Okay, let's see, uh, I got my antenna built, got my uh, vector network analyzer set up at 915 megahertz. Uh, let's see how it performs. So, looking at it, uh, let's get it up like that. So, we've got an SWR of 1.38 to 1.4, that is fantastic. And my center frequency is 929 megahertz. So. I perhaps trimmed these just a little bit too short, so instead of going 14.75, maybe 14.8 would have been ideal and put me right at 915. However, this thing is fantastic. I'm ready to go hook it up and mine some helium. Until next time, guys, take care.